early stage lung cancer as dr virendra has already told what do you mean by early stage lung cancer when we are talking about sbrt in early stage lung cancer so it's a n0 disease so definition as many of you are the non radiation oncologically so many international guidelines so uh, define sbrt as a method of external beam radiation therapy that accurately and precisely delivers high doses of radiation therapy in one or few treatment fashion to an extracranial target so that's called the definition of sbrt and what do you mean by sbrt in lung cancer yeah but similarly in lung cancer also yeah it is highly precise highly conformal very high doses per fraction generally delivered in 2 to 5 fraction now it has got a steep dose gradient as far as the as far as the procedure is concerned it is an outpatient procedure non invasive it gets over in a week or two and it has got an excellent local control with a comparable overall survival as compared to surgery as you can see the have a graph here that the rate of sbrt in early stage lung cancer has increasing continuously yeah but since the last two and a half a decade now how do you select the patient of sbrt in early stage lung cancer so this points yeah but needs to be considered first one is the tumor size the other is the nodal status third is the location of the tumor in the lung whether it is right sided left sided upper lobe lower lobe close to the peripheral or uh, close to the central structure the pulmonary reserve of the patient it is also impacts the local control and the overall survival of the patient and the operability if the patient is medically in, uh, inoperable the sbrt is the gold standard so sbrt lung features so especially in lung cancer we are dealing with a smaller tumor size for example less than 5 cm in size we are also dealing with the tumor motion because the lung as well as the tumor are moving you know, constantly when we are delivering the chat treatment now it has got a very steep dose gradient so the delineation and the verification are very important and we are using very high dose per fractionation so there is a uh, if you miss the target then your target can be uh, underestimated and we are using multiple beams so we need to be very mindful of the multiple beams and the accurate verification with either the daily epid or the cbct now the challenge is the features of the lung sbrt can also be a challenge so because we are treating a smaller tumor size the radiation machines should be equipped with the treatment of the smaller tumor sizes or smaller field there is a lung tissue interface so it means that there is a density change so between the soft tissue lung and then the soft tissue the target is moving the organ at risk the lung itself is moving and the radiation machine the multi leaf collimator also moving so it also poses the challenges of lung sbrt especially in lung especially in the lower lobe now how do you you have to do the sbrt treatment planning first we assess the patient with the clinical and the physical you have examination the pulmonary function test you have should be considered the comorbidity status of the patient we need to send the patient to the pulmonologist and do the pulmonary optimization if the pfts are bad we need to so we need to do the 4d ct scan which is a type of motion management technique the delineation dose fractionation and the technique of the radiation therapy like imrt or vmat and the most important thing is the quality assurance so uh, and the patient specific the quality assurance check should be done so before we deliver the sbrt on day 1 and online verification with, so with the daily cbct now when you want to delineate and dose fractionation the gross tumor volume is generally the radiological imaging whatever you see on the ct scan that's your gross tumor and you can take the help of the radiologist or the nuclear medicine the clinical target volume is generally the gross tumor volume there is no clinical target volume margin because of the steep dose gradient and high dose fraction now it will take care of the microscopic disease the internal target volume is the margin that is being given for the account of the motion so whenever you are having a motion so you need to account for that the planning target volume is usually institutional based but generally 5 mm from the gross tumor volume and these are the various dose fractionation scheme that has been used in the literature we used you know 12 grain to 5 fraction at tata memorial hospital now there are various retrospective studies in the in the 21st century as you can see the local control is good the overall survival 3 year overall survival 5 year overall survival so ranges between 40% to 60% depending upon the whether the patient is so medically inoperable or operable and there are various prospective studies which have also shown that the 5 year overall survival can reach up to 50 to 60% so this is the first prospective random uh, so this is the first prospective observational study rtog0236 and it has shown that the 5 year local control can be as high as sub 80% and the 5 year overall survival can be as high as 40% in medically inoperable patient
However, the grade three toxicity was 15 patient because the dose per fractionation that is used was 20 gray per fraction. 20 gray per fraction is a large dose per fraction that we don't deliver usually have in conventional treatment. So this is the Japanese trial, uh, Japanese study, which have shown that we need to deliver a minimum biologically effective dose of 100 gray. So there is a difference between a physical dose and a biologically effective dose. Biologically effective dose should be a minimum of, of the 100 gray. If it is less than 100 gray, the local control and the overall survival can be poor. So this is the Japanese study. Uh, we have already almost debated in every lung cancer conference about the uh, debate about the FBRT and surgery and the and the outcome of SBRT is generally poor. So because the follow-up is poor, two years, five years. But the Japanese study has got a 10-year overall survival of 25%. So that means one in four patients was alive at the rate of 10 years. And the 10-year local control was also um, excellent. It is 85%. Now, these are the randomized control trials that have been attempted, Stars and Rosal, but unfortunately, they terminated due to the poor accrual. The reason was the majority of the Western countries, the European and the North American, the thoracic surgeon were not able to participate in the study. And they declined to join the study because they failed that the surgery is the superior modality in medically operable patients. So these are the result of a randomized control trial, very small patient sample, uh, only 55, but the Star and Rosal, they published their result in the Lancet Oncology. And they have shown that the three-year overall survival was better in SBRT as compared to surgery. However, there was criticism that the patient might not have undergone a proper surgery in this, uh, in this trial. So what they did... The STARS trial, they revised the protocol and they continued the treatment of SBRT in medically operable patients where the patient is not willing for surgery. So they treated approximately 80 patients and this is the data of the MD Anderson Cancer Center. And they, and they compared with the pre-specified the published institutional surgical cohort and the five-year overall survival with the medically operable was 87%. So we have, it's huge, but obviously it's, a, have, it's not a randomized evidence. But when you see on the propensity score matching the 87% with SBRT versus 72% with the VATS and the mediastinal lymph node dissection, so which was statistically significant. But this is not a randomized level one evidence that we need to consider that. What will happen when you treat the central lung tumor? Because so many a times, so these are medically inoperable patient or medically operable, but the PFTs are like slightly borderline and the patient does not want to go ahead with the surgery. If you treat this patient with high doses per fashion, you will have higher pulmonary toxicity like bronchopulmonary hemorrhage or stenosis. And, and these particular studies have shown that the freedom from severe toxicity in the central lung tumor is only 54% in the centrally located. And as you can see in this picture, the central located tumor is the proximal bronchial tree and is two centimeter in all around direction. Now, how do you define central lung tumor? So it has been defined from, from the 2007 onwards, like 2015. First, it was described as a no-fly zone, and then the technology has developed and the dose per fractionation has reduced. RTOG, 02, uh, RTOG 0813 has also discussed that the PTV touching any mediastinal or pericardial pleura should be defined as the central tumors. And then in 2015, the central tumors, anything which is close to the brachial plexus, mediastinal or diaphragmatic pleura should be considered as the central tumor and should not be treated with a very high dose per fractionation. So this is the risk adapted strategy where you change the dose per fractionation depending on the tumor size and the location. And they have shown that there is no grade four or five toxicity encounter if you change the dose per fractionation. Now, this is the RTOG 0813 trial. It's a dose escalation trial where you are seeing that the how and how much should be the dose per fractionation in the central tumors. So they standardized the 10 gray per fractionation and they escalated the dose and they found out only five patients experienced the dose limiting toxicity out of uh, approximately 90. And, and they concluded that the maximum tolerated dose was 12 gray per fraction. And they also published the overall survival result in the central tumor. The three-year overall survival was close to 54%, and the three-year local control was approximately 85%. Now coming to the ultra central tumor, ultra central tumor has been defined in various ways by various authors and the institute. So it generally means when your GTV or the PTV is touching or overlapping with your, uh, uh, for example, with your mediastinal critical structure, for example, bronchus, main bronchus or carina or vertebral body or the mediastinal pleura or the pericardium. Now we know that the ultra central tumor will behave poorly as compared to the central tumors. So because of the toxicity and the treatment related death or 
or for example non cancer related death so this is the hilo trial so which was recently published in 2021 and it has also shown that when the tumor is touching the mediastinal pleura or to any mediastinal critical structure like the bronchus or carina the outcomes are going to be bad so you need to be very careful about the dose per fractionation that you are going to use so they have used the 7 grain to 8 fraction so might be we need to reduce it more like for example 5 grain or or for example 6 grain now when do you want to compare uh, so with the uh, sbrt with the conventional rt so because for many of the uh, hospitals in india or the cancer hospitals in india do not have the facility of sbrt they have the cobalt machine or something like that so yeah but this is the randomized control trial where they have compared the stereotactic body radiation therapy was uh, so versus conventional fractionated radiation therapy so what they found out that the three year overall survival and pfs might not be different but the pneumonitis and the esophagitis rate were drastically reduced so with sbrt as compared to conventional fractionation so there is one more randomized control trial by the name of chisel it has also shown that the local failure is much less in sbrt versus conventional fractionation and the overall survival has also improved with sbrt as compared to conventional fractionation so now this is the so uh, these are the ongoing studies uh, comparing sbrt versus surgery we will have to wait for the result to uh, definitely say that sbrt is at least you uh, know equivalent to the surgical cord but one of the uh, studies from the uk the saber tooth has been published the, uh, in an abstract form and they have concluded that the phase 3 randomized control trial is not uh, feasible in the nhs so because so many of these patient uh, who who were randomized to the surgical group decline and chose the sbr and the and the accrual rate of 4 to 5 patient per month was not met now as far as the adjuvant chemotherapy is concerned uh, there are no randomized control trial but there are approximately from so for example multi institutional analysis and the nccdb analysis and they have shown that when you deliver adjuvant you have a systemic therapy in tumor size more than 4 cm they decrease the local regional recurrence rate as compared to tumor size which are less than 4 cm so if in case you have a tumor size more than 4 cm just refer to the medical oncologist and let them decide so whether the patient need the adjuvant chemotherapy or not now there is a lot of talk about the role of immunotherapy in early stage lung cancer so these authors have conducted a randomized phase 2 trial where they have seen the major pathological response when you combine the new adjuvant immunotherapy plus sbrt before the surgery and what they have found out that as compared to immunotherapy alone so before as uh, as compared to immunotherapy alone before surgery if you if you add the sbrt the major pathological response was seen in the 16 patient out of 30 so major pathological response improved when you add the sbrt to immunotherapy but this was only a randomized phase 2 trial we need further randomized phase 3 trial to prove the efficacy of sbrt so before the surgical treatment so when you talk about the sbrt we do not have a pathological complete response rate for so this author from australia david palma they conducted a phase 2 clinical trial where they have seen when you deliver sbrt before the surgery the pathological complete response rate was seen in only 60% of the patient so you need to carefully monitor this patient follow up this patient for a possible local relapse so because the pathological complete response rate was only 60% so in, in summary the sbrt in early stage non small cell lung cancer have an have excellent local regional control rate have it has got a comparable five year overall survival but the randomized data is still not there so we need to wait for the randomized control trial the minimum toxicity with no change in quality of life and you need to have a risk adapted approach you have know, depending on the location of the tumor peripheral versus central or ultra central no immediate mortality risk and it can be suitable for all for example all location the elderly low pft and severe copd so with this i would like to thank the organizer for inviting me and i would be happy to take any questions if there are any okay thank you